What's up everyone? Today is we start a new segment of bringing to my channel called Blast from the Past. What this is, I'll basically be playing through an old game. When I say old game, this can go from like PS1, N64, SNES, NES, up to the 360, PS3 era. And today's game that I played recently is Gears of War 1. Now, here's the thing with Gears of War. This is the first game that I played online properly. I played other games online before this, but never like fully, not, not got totally infested into an online game. And this was the first game I got completely infested in, and I loved it. The thing I liked about this gameplay to others, such as Call of Duty, First Person Sewers and all that, is that this game, the gameplay and multiplayer was slowed down and it was, it, it was a bit tactical, it wasn't too tactical, you had certain different weapons, you had to plan stuff. Oh, but most of them you could run in there and just go for the hell of it and try to take down your opponent. But more than likely, if you ran in all guns blazing and there was a, uh, your enemy had another guy with you, you were mostly screwed. So there was a bit of tactical planning as well as a bit of guns blazing. There was a mi good mix of both in the multiplayer to make it interesting at all times. And I, I played hours this and it's, it was just an extremely fun game it's just it's it was a, it was a simple game like there wasn't any upgrade anything you start a game you pick what character skin you want you go into the game the weapons laid out before you that's it there was no upgrading there was no parks it was just simple and it was nice and refreshing back then to have a game that well done and balanced for the most part there was a couple of things needed balancing such as the sock gun being completely powerful as hell Independent if the horse had a great connection, that horse would just destroy your ass. But that's, but that's besides the point. Uh, and the sort, keeping the sort of multiplayer is great. And is I played it recently, and there is some people playing it, thankfully. But sadly, not as much as there used to be, which is understandable. But I do feel kind of sad. But with the Gears of War Ultimate Edition coming out, and the backwards compatibility for the Xbox One, I'm hoping the online community comes back to Gears of War 1. Because for me, I, it's one of the best multiplayer experiences I've ever experienced, and it's a simple but so much fun experience, especially for a group of friends. It is a, it is just a lot of fun. But no, to the main point of this review, the multiplayer is all grand and good, but the main point of these reviews is to revisit the single player, because that's the thing that will last no matter what. The multiplayer community could disappear for a game, but the single player will always be there. And the game's worth single player. It's short, but playing it again, I remember why I loved this game and got so infested in the story. In this game and the further games down the line. The Gears of War Trilogy overall is one of my favourite series of all time. And here's the thing. It's so... It's very surprising. To a, a person who's never played it but saw trailers. They'd look at these like, big meathead muscle guys. And they'd be like. Oh this is one of those generic oh, meathead games. Where the character's just like. Oh yeah. Screw those monsters. Guns. Bullets. And the truth is. Well it, it is really. They, that's exactly what they are. But the thing is. They're a bit deeper than that. They, their appearance and sometimes the way they act is like that and it's funny as hell. But it it's it brings a lot of com com comedy to the game. But they're also deeper. The more you play in, the more you care for these characters and see that each character has their own personality. That they're not all just your stereotypical me heads. That they actually have deeper meaning than that. Now I'm not saying it's like amazingly deep, but it's deeper. And as the games continue, like Gears of War 2 and 3, they in explore these characters more and more and you really get attached to them. That's the thing about this game. The characters have a certain charm to them. Most of all, the coal train, baby. For people who understand, well, play the game, you understand what it means. Others play it and you lo love coal train. Like everyone else who played Gears does. But partly one of my favourite characters is Baird. He's one, he's one of the soldiers, but he's not your typical soldier. In fact, he is probably the farthest thing from a meathead you can get. He's sarcastic, he doesn't like people, he all thinks everyone has a stupid idea. He's basically the smart one of the group. Okay, they're all intelligent for the most part, but Baird thinks himself more intelligent than the rest of them. And mechanical-wise, he arguably is the best mechanic on the team, but the smartest, more than likely, but his attitude just doesn't get him that leadership role, but... That's just going to story specifics. Overall, this, I don't want to spoil it for people who want to play the game, but I'll try to keep it as minimum spoil as possible. But essentially, the whole point of the Gears of War 1 story is basically you have the locusts are this race from underground. We'll just call them alien race or monsters, whatever you wish. And they're coming up to take over the world. And there's a certain reason for this, but that gets explored in later games. Basically, they're taking on the Gears. And the Gears don't want like that, so they're going to have to fight back. I know they've found that they have had this technology called the Resonator, which will map out all the tunnels, which they can deploy a light mass bomb, which is basically just a giant bomb that blows up all the tunnels. And the whole point of the story is that you have to get this bomb, this Resonator, get into the Locust Tunnel to map it out. 
Now, a couple of things change here and there. It takes a couple of quick twists and turns. But essentially, that is the point of the game. And you think, oh, that doesn't sound that interesting. But it's the characters and the situations they get into that really makes the game worth playing. It's just, it has a lot of charm to it. And the scenery. It's very grey and brown. Do you those brown suits everyone hates? They want some colour. And in the, the later games, they do have colour. But it fits well here because... How I see it is that everything seems so bleak and brown and grey, but I think it fits into the game because right now, and where the gears are, the stage of the war the locusts is, is that everything's bleak. They're losing. The locusts are really screwing up the human humanity's world. And I think the bleakness and the scenery, uh, it could just be the art style. But to me, I like to think of it as a way of representing the way humanity feels at the moment. It's bleak. It's depressing. But there's that spark, you'll see colour at a certain times, and it, it, uh, to me it represents that hope, that there is hope to win this war. And there's a thing, a theory I think, when the later Gears games, like Gears War 2, they add a bit more colour to it. And I think that represents that since, no spoilers, but a certain event happens in Gears War 1, where there is more hope for humanity in Gears War 2, and you notice there's more colour, which I think represents the hope coming back. And then Gears War 3, most colour of her game completely. And you and that's when basically it's the final fight. And there's a possibility that we could win. It's it's not that much, but we could win. And it's just so colourful. I think it represents the humanity finally got a fight back. It's got his hope. No, that could just be scenery. It could just be me talking bullshit. But it's a nice theory to have that the way the scenery and the colour is represents the hope of humanity. But again, I digress. That's, that's just a theory. I like to think it's a good theory, but alas. But basically, the gameplay of this game is near flawless. It's a simple third person sewer. But the thing is, there's been plenty of these games, but they've done this so well. The gameplay is smooth, when you get the cover jumping out, it's so well done. But the thing is, it isn't just suiting things all the time. Well, okay, let's be 90% of the time, it is suiting things. Thankfully, the shooting is a lot of fun. And it has one of the most badass weapons you can have a lancer. It's essentially an assault rifle with a chainsaw attached to the bottom of it. How awesome can you? get a chainsaw attached to an assault rifle what more is there need to be said here and it's just so satisfying chainsaw and one of the locusts in half is just awesome and there is a couple of different enemy types there's your standard locusts where it's like the grunts they're like basically just normal looking like they're human size then you have wretches which are these really fast almost like dog type monsters then you have the big bosses like the corpse or it's just a big huge scorpion looking thing it's awesome but it's just crazy and it basically, the game is fun. The gameplay is smooth, it's crisp, and it's a really, it's really fun just to suit stuff. But as I was saying, there's different things you can get to. Like, there's this one level where, if you step into the dark, these bat-like creatures called the Krill will devour you in seconds. They will just kill you. So you got to stay in the light or create light sources using these canisters. But they're placed in certain situations and areas. And it's just a nice little detour from just standard run and suit. While you still do a lot of suit and running, there's this extra element. And you get a couple of them throughout the game, and it's just fun. This game is not going to set, like... It's not a masterpiece by any means, but it is an incredibly fun game. The story and characters are charming as hell, and they get even better. The good thing about the series is, is that if you like the first game, but wish there was more to it, the guess what, 2 and 3 add more, and it gets better. This series gets progressively better. Well, when I say series, I mean the original trilogy, 1, 2, and 3. I haven't played... Gears of War Judgment, I will one day, but for now, Gears of War 1, 2, and 3 is from Tabu. And there's also an entire book series, there's like 4 or 5 books for the Gears of War trilogy. And as you, if you think this game doesn't have a story, you read those books, and it, it, it attaches to the games completely in between the games, and it really adds layers and layers upon this story. The Gears of War world is a very interesting one, and it's unexpected. You think first glance that it's your stereotypical generic action game, but it's much more than that. When you look through it, when you really take an in-depth look to it, it gets... It is just a phenomenal game series to me, and I recommend anyone check it out. Because essentially it isn't a fun action game. It's a fun story with fun characters, and you can't go wrong. You can pick it up these days for like 5, 10 euros, or wherever you live, it's dirt cheap. It's just cheap as hell, and it's worth getting. Because it is a f even if you don't enjoy the multiplayer, the single player campaign is worth getting alone. It's 5 hours, but by God, it's some of the most fun 5 hours you will ever have. Thank you for listening. And if you like, comment, subscribe, as all YouTubers like to say. And thank you, and I'll see you next time.